This is Working Wooden Planes. I'm Abraham. I take antique planes and get them back into working condition. Uh, today we have a, an unmarked smooth plane. Um, really filthy, uh, needs a lot of work, but we are gonna take it from looking like this to looking like this. Uh, this plane cleans up really nicely and ends up being a great plane. Um, like I said, it's going to need a lot of work, so this video is a little bit longer. Hopefully you want to stick around uh, and see how we do it. A um, little bit of wood damage at the toe. It's got these reinforcements. Um, a lot of these planes came with these. The toe splitting was a really common um, thing to have happen, so put these reinforcements in to, to maintain the structural integrity of the plane. Um, the bottom's got a couple, uh, the, the sole has a couple uh, wormholes, but still really solid. Um, we should be able to lap that um, and flatten it down really easily. This is the big, the big issue here is this uh, throat insert has popped out, um, and so we're gonna have to make a new one and have it fit. Um, that crack in the toe uh, is really stable. It doesn't move when I mess with it, so I think it's going to be okay. Uh, I don't think it should give us any problems down the road. Um, let's see. Yeah, a little wood damage down there. The eyes look okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. The, um, I call them teeth. It's whatever the protrusion is right behind the eye. A little chipping on the right side, that's okay, not a big deal. Uh, the one thing that is problematic is that the cheek is blown out uh, over on the right there, and so that will need some glue. Uh, tote is loose, so let me put a little insert in there. Um, but yeah, let's uh, jump in and start cleaning this thing up. I like uh, Murphy's Oil Soap. Um, I think it's very gentle. Uh, on this plane, it was unfortunately too gentle. Um, it took off some of the of the dirt, but it just was leaving leaving most of it behind. So I switched to um, denatured alcohol, which is a tiny bit stronger. It's still fairly well, delicate is the right word um, but right away you can see that it started taking off um, some of the residual dirt that the that the Murphy's left behind How you clean uh, the body of a plane is really a personal preference. Um, you know, people sand them, people take, you know, jack planes and run them through table saws to take off the sides and the sole. Um, you know, you really, it's, it's all about how you want it to look. Um, I don't like that raw wood look. Um, so that's why I'm willing to put in a little bit more time and energy and, and scrub these things down uh, and try to get them what I, I feel like is close to what they looked like, you know, when they were being used 100 years ago, 120, 30, 40, 50 years ago. And then once all the dirt is off and you let it dry, let all that residual alcohol uh, evaporate, um, just do some paste wax on it. Um, boiled linseed oil is the other really popular way of finishing these. Um, I, I feel like the wood linseed oil darkens the wood um, too often. Um, really kind of depends on how banged up and damaged the wood is. Um, but I really like the sort of like soft glow that the that the paste wax um, gives the wood. A lot of people don't like the feeling of the, of the paste wax on the tote when you're using it. I really feel like that kind of like the, kind of like a slightly tacky feeling. It just, it wears off really quickly um, through repeated use. Ends up feeling like bare wood pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, again, personal preference. Um, 
but I think this ends up looking pretty nice. The two major things that we need to glue are the cheek and the tote. Um, the cheek, I want to get some glue down in that crack without making it any worse. So wedging it open a little bit, um, then using a infant Tylenol syringe to try and get some glue down into that gap. Obviously epoxy is also good for these. Um, usually leave the epoxy for um, fixing cracks or gaps that really need extra, extra structural support. Um, I think this here should stay, the glue should do a sufficient job in keeping, um, in keeping this closed. Uh, moving on to the tote. The tote has is completely separated. The trick is going to be able to get glue underneath there. Um, just going back to the to the cheek for a minute. Um, it's pretty common to see those splits happen because people leave the the uh, iron in the plane and over the years or decades of it not being used the wood um, contracts and expands and contracts and then eventually splits out um, because the iron's in it um, here with the tote you know who knows why it loosened up over the years um, I was able to get glued down in there pretty well um, we'll see how this, as I continue to use this plane over the next couple of months, let's see how, how uh, if, it, if it stays, if the glue is, is sufficient, if the glue job that I did is sufficient. So clean up the excess glue and then I'm gonna take and clamp this thing up and leave it overnight. And now let's move on to the uh, replacing that that insert. Um, so what I have here is an old plane, um, late 1800s that I milled down from a, I think it was a, a fillet stir or maybe a round. I'm not sure. The the plane was totally wrecked and unusable. Um, but I thought, hey, maybe I can get some. Uh, decent wood out of this and use this for the insert so I cut this down to almost the exact width that we need but now we have to figure out uh, the height and the angle as well so uh, first off just taking a quick measurement with calipers and we're going to transfer that uh, measurement of the height over to the wood So now I'm going to choose an arbitrary point about halfway up, um, mark it on the plane. A little awkward trying to do this, you know, under the camera while still being able to look at it. Uh, so, so mark that same point on 
the wood. Now go back and mark the width of the mortise right at that point. And transfer that to the wood, just sort of eyeballing it right in the center. I'm gonna draw a straight line in between the bottom line and the midpoint, which should give us the nearly exact width of the top. Uh, and all of these measurements have been a tiny bit wide because I would like to plane this down to the correct size uh, rather than try to cross my fingers and hope that it fits perfectly. Uh, so to take a panel saw, cut off, uh, cut it down to size. So taking a Stanley number five, throwing it in my vice, my vice racks so badly. I, ins I messed up the installation and uh, that thing is a pain. Um, yeah, I have it set for a really, really slight um, cut or a very small cut uh, and it's just gonna be a matter of checking the size, sh uh, shaving a little bit more, checking the sh size, shaving a little bit more. Um, this whole process probably took me 15, between 15 and 20 minutes. Um, and that was mainly because I just was going so slow and rechecking and rechecking and rechecking. I did not wanna have to go back and remeasure and recut this insert. Uh, so, as you can see from the shavings, it's just the lightest, um, the lightest cut that I'm making. And ta-da, we get it working. Um, obviously paying close attention to that crack that I'm not widening it, that I'm not somehow widening it. And now to glue it up. Uh, initially I was a little worried about the surface area for the glue that there's, because of those auger holes, um, that the mortise just didn't have enough surface area. But once I got it all smeared in, I was pretty happy with it. And I think, uh, I think we have sufficient, sufficient coverage. Uh, but again, like the tote, uh, we will see over time, um, especially as the, as the year goes by and the wood in the plane contract, expands and contracts, um, you know, naturally. And we'll see if this gets if this pops out, but I don't think it's going to. Pretty happy with, with how this turned out. Clean off that excess glue and clamp it up. So once that's nice and dry, I left it for about a day and a half. Um, I'm gonna cut off the excer uh, cut off the excess. Give us a little bit of time. And then again with the Stanley number five um, and taking very very light shavings. This down to where it's flush. This took me about five minutes to do. It was 
pretty quick. And here's the finished product. Um, very happy with how well that fits. Uh, I'm not too worried about the width right now because we will need to file that out. Um, and we still need to lap the sole, but the insert looks fantastic. Oh, the one thing that I forgot to mention about the insert is if you're doing this, make sure that it is that the grain is headed in the right direction um, so that when you do need to plane it down, you're not planing against the grain. Uh, yeah. So now, lap the sole. Uh, I start with 220. Uh, I feel like uh, grits that are any heavier than that, you really run the risk of um, really quickly taking too much off the sole, and then that would it would ruin everything that we had done for adding that insert in. Um, so I'll run it across a couple times here just to see where the high points are. And based on just the sandpaper, looks like both sides are pretty high and there's a low point in the center. Um, so we will want to take that down. Looks like the toe is getting okay contact. Um, so now this is just a matter of slowly but surely taking off a little bit at a time. So now we're looking for, um, you know, can we see, can we see light, you know, through the, through the bottom of the straight edge? Um, Looks like you can a little bit in the center. You know, there's that that high point uh, or that low point right at the toe that we're not going to be able to do anything about, and one right at the heel as well, um, where wood has deteriorated in both of those locations. Um, but the main part of the sole, which is the most important part. Um, in terms of it being flat, uh, looks pretty good. So I'm going to speed up through this part. Um, this is where I file the mouth open um, to the correct to the correct size, uh, and this is just a matter of inserting the iron uh, once the iron's in there, uh, marking the the amount of space that you're going to need for the iron to come out. Um, you want to leave um, about a sixteenth of an inch um, gap between the front of the mouth and the iron and the the cutting edge of the iron. Um, this is specifically for a smooth plane, a jack plane probably you can um, get a little bit wider than that but um, I have read people saying it should be even down to like one thirty-second of an inch. Um, I think one sixteenth is fine. Um, anything smaller than that, I feel like clogs really easily. Um, so yeah, so this is just a matter of chisel and file to get it to where I needed it to be. So I threw the original iron, cap iron, um, into some vapor rust, I'm a big fan of vapor rust, uh, and they appeared to clean up pretty well um, until um, I started looking closer at the iron and it is totally unusable. It is just a honeycomb of just pits and holes and divots. Um, on both sides, there's no hope for this iron at all. Uh, no matter how much you sharpen it, the cutting edge is just going to look like a cheese grater. Uh, so I happen to have a um, Buck Brothers iron from probably the same time period, late late 1800s, um, and pretty sure that the cutting edge was in better condition. Um, so 
put it in the vapor rust um, and found yeah had a very workable very workable um, iron and and chip breaker um, I know there's a number of different methods out there for clearing rust uh, I used to use vinegar decided I didn't wasn't a real big fan of it um, I had it really etch a uh, a tool handle at one point in time and I've just been very wary of it ever since. Vapor Rust is a little a little pricier um, but you just can't beat the you can't beat the results. Um, so Buck Brothers yeah now they're known for subpar uh, edge tools. Um, back then back when the Buck Brothers or at least two of them were running the company, um, they still produce some, some high quality stuff. Um, so just going to take and scrub off the gunk left behind by the vapor rust process. So once they're all cleaned up and protected with a little bit of paste wax, uh, I am gonna try and um, put a new bevel on it. So I'll start with a coarser grit and a 220. Um, and this is the probably the part that will take the longest. Um, oh yeah, remember, to always clean off your sandpaper surface um, because if you don't and there's any particulate matter left over, particularly from these higher or these slower grit um, paper um, that's not wet dry, um, it'll leave grit all over your, the surface and you'll follow up with some 400 paper or some 800 and you'll find that it just wrecks the, the iron as you're trying to, as you're trying to, um, the residual, it just wrecks the iron as you're trying to sharpen it. Uh, all that residual um, bits of, of sandpaper. So yeah, like I said, this takes the, the most amount of time. Probably spent at least 15 minutes uh, on the on the 220 before I felt like I had a bevel that was that was ready to be sharpened. So we'll move through this pretty quick. Um, about three or four minutes on the 400. And from there to the 800. And then finally to the 120. Excuse me, finally to the uh, 1200. And then I'll use the ruler trick, although I'll just use a piece of cardboard um, to put a little back bevel on it. Uh, what I don't show is that I went back and re I flattened the entire back um, after I had gone through the sharpening process because the back needed a lot of work. So that that happened off camera. And what I end up with is a very nice and sharp iron. So now let's put it to work and see how well it works. So fairly easy to set the iron on this. You can advance it to the mouth. Uh, so it's just peeking out of the mouth and then back it up a little bit. Um, set that wedge and advance it just a little bit. Advance a little more. 
And there we go. So you'll notice right off the bat that we're having a problem with the length of the shavings. We're not getting long shavings at all, um, which shows that there is some kind of problem happening. Um, we're getting the shavings themselves are, are very thin, but you can look and see that the, the sort of waves in that shavings means that the iron is not um, sitting firmly on the bed of the throat and it's chattering and as it chatters it uh, leaves those warbly uh, marks on the shavings. Um, so you can have to go back and reseat the iron. Um, so this guy on YouTube, and I'm gonna totally butcher his name, Bob Rosayeski, something like that, um, does a lot of woodworking stuff. Um, and he's got this this cool trick um, for bedding and for rebedding an iron. Um, and what he does is he takes the iron and a candle, and he uses the candle to cover the iron in soot or the part of the iron that touches the throat to cover it in soot. And so once it's covered in soot, you very gently um, reinsert it into the plane and you tamp the wedge down and then you pull it back out again um, and there should be scuff marks in the soot where the high points are. You can then use that as a, as a template or just use that as a guide to uh, where you need to sand, sand the, the bed down. Um, so I got my candle and I fired it up. Uh, by the way, I'll leave a link down to his video uh, in the description. But it didn't work out for me. So I don't know if it's because I used the, the chip breaker. Um, I'm not sure exactly why not, but I inserted it carefully and added the wedge and tamp that wedge down nice and hard uh, or at least hard enough that I wasn't able to pull it out on my own popped it loose and nothing two little scuff marks now i know for a fact that the iron is touching the bed in more than two very small places i don't know how it would be able to just perform if it was that loosely held into the plane um, so i tried this a couple more times and i got nowhere um, uh, I think the, the fault was with me, not with the method. The method's pretty clever um, and it's better than using other materials on your, like a marker or something like that on your, on your iron. Um, so since I didn't have, since I didn't know what else to do, um, I just grabbed the, a file and keeping it as um, parallel as possible to the bed tried to find high spots and to narrow them down and to uh, flatten them out. So clean off the iron, pop it back in and let's see how well it does. And we're still getting those chatter marks, but we are getting much, much longer, uh, shavings um, which shows that um, 
filing that bed made a big improvement. Um, still not perfect, um, so we do need to go back after this and file down that bed a little bit more. Um, but this is much closer to how this plane should be performing. Okay, the finished product. Uh, new insert, lap sole, glued tote, glued cheek, um, rebedded iron, and overall, um, I think a really beautiful looking plane um, that is, uh, is a real keeper when it comes to how well it performs. A um, little bit more work on that, on that end to get it perfect, but uh, this looks good. Thanks for watching. Um, if you like these kind of videos, uh, taking old planes and, and cleaning them up, um, uh, be sure to subscribe. Uh, I'm going to try to start doing these a little bit more regularly. And I think the next video I do actually is going to be not a, re a restoration, but uh, how to destroy a wooden body plane. So hopefully that's a little bit of fun. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching.